Hello there everyone. I am Tushika and I welcome you all to a video lesson on nouns. So, today we are going to study about what is a noun and the four main types of nouns. So, let's start. First, we need to understand why do we learn about nouns. Well, noun is the most basic and essential element of English. So, it's very important to learn about nouns. Let's start by taking a look at what is a noun. A noun is a name of a person, place, animal, thing, feeling or idea. So, person. It can be a name of any person. A name of a boy like Ram or name of a girl like Sita. Next, we have place. We have London, Mumbai and we have so many other places. In animals, we have fox and cat. Thing, table, chair, feeling or idea, these are, these are abstract nouns. Happiness, truth. Now, let's learn about the four main types of nouns. They are proper noun, common noun, abstract noun and collective nouns. Now, we'll take a look at the four main types of nouns. They are proper noun, common noun, abstract noun and collective noun. Let's understand each of them in detail. So, a proper noun is a noun which refers to a specific, particular or unique thing. In general, we can say that it refers to a thing which is only one in this world. For example, the river Ganga. The river Ganga is only one. That's why it's a proper noun. Then we have Mount Everest. And then we have a name of a girl, Rhea. Next, we will look at common nouns. So, a common noun is just the opposite of a proper noun. They do not speak in general or particular, but refer to a general or non-specific thing. Example, boy, river or city. We can have any boy, any river or any city. Next, we will look at abstract nouns. So, abstract noun refers to a feeling, idea or opinion. We cannot touch abstract nouns, but just feel them. Example, anger, truth, sadness. All of these feelings, uh, we cannot touch them, but we can feel them. Next, lastly, we have collective nouns. So, collective nouns refer to a thing, a collection of things or people. Example, a cache of diamonds. A lot, a lot of diamonds collected together is known as a cache of diamonds. So, Cash here is a collective noun. Next, we have a swarm of bees. A large number of bees together is known as a swarm of bees. So, swarm here is the collective noun. Now, we'll recap what we have learned. Now, let's recap what we have learned till now. Here, I have five sentences and you need to identify which type of noun is this. Let's start. First, Mahatma Gandhi always spoke the truth. Here in this sentence, Mahatma Gandhi is the proper noun because it is the name of only one person. So it's a proper noun. And truth. Truth is a quality. That's why it's an abstract noun. We cannot touch truth, just feel it. So it's an abstract noun. Second sentence, pain and pleasure go hand in hand. Here, Pain and pleasure are both abstract nouns because they are uh, the names of feelings. Abstract nouns. Next we have the angry mob marched towards the police station. Here mob is a collection of people. That's why it's a collective noun. And police station is the name of a common place. That's why it's a common noun. So we have collective noun and common noun. Next, the children are playing in the park. Here, children, it's a common noun because we are not uh, referring to a particular child by talking in general. That's why it's a common noun. And park, it's also a common noun because uh, we are not mentioning the name of the park and it's a common place. So both of these uh, nouns, children and park, are common nouns. Next, we have John goes to the market every Sunday. In this sentence, we have three nouns. John, market and Sunday. John is a proper noun because it's the name of a specific or particular
particular boy. So, John is a proper noun. Next, we have market. Here, market is the common noun because we are not specifying any particular market but speaking in general. And Sunday. Sunday is the name of a particular uh, particular day. That's why it's a, a proper noun. Now, here we end our session on nouns. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new from it. Please do comment as it motivates me to make new videos. Till then, bye-bye. Keep learning. Hello there everyone. I am Shishika and welcome you all to another lesson on nouns. Now. In our so, previous video, today we, we learned, learned about the four main types of nouns now, and the four main types of nouns, nouns common nouns, so, abstract nouns yes, and collective nouns. First, in this lesson, we are going to be learning about, about nouns. nouns. The next four types well, of nouns, noun is the which most are basic complete and nouns, and the nouns, 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 and the uncomfortable nouns. It's very important to learn about. Let's start. First, we'll just quickly recap what we learned in our last lesson. We learned that noun is the name of a person, place, animal, thing, feeling or idea. Next, we studied about the four main types of nouns. Proper nouns refers to a particular or specific thing and they always start with capital letters. Then, we learned about common nouns. They speak in general and do not speak in particular. Then, we studied about abstract nouns. They were uh, the names of feelings, ideas or opinions. And then we study about collective nouns. They were collection of things or people. Now let's study about what is a concrete noun. A concrete noun is the name of a noun which can be touched or seen. For example, cup, room, table. All of these things can be touched and seen. That's why they come under concrete nouns. Next we have material nouns. Material nouns are names of things out of which things are made. For example, gold, steel and wood. We use gold, gold for making jewelry. We, are, we have silver cut, cutleries, steel for making iron things and wood for making furniture. Now, here many students will have some confusion that what is the difference between concrete noun and material noun. Let's take an example. Suppose... We have a building. What is a building made out of? It's made out of brick and cement. So, brick and cement are the building blocks of building. So, they come under material nouns. And building, which is the thing that can be seen or uh, seen or touched, will come under concrete noun. Next, we'll study about countable nouns. Countable nouns, as the name suggests, are things which can be counted. For example, table, brick, coffee beans. All of these things can be counted and hence come under countable nouns. Then we have uncountable nouns. The name, uh, the name explains that uh, this, this refers to things which cannot be counted. For example, milk, furniture, coffee. All of these things cannot be counted and therefore they come under uncountable nouns. You might have already noticed that in countable nouns, I have written coffee beans and under uncountable nouns, I have written coffee. So, here is the difference. Coffee beans refers uh, to, thing, uh, to the beans uh, of coffee which are added in the coffee. So, they come under countable nouns as coffee beans can be counted. But here, coffee refers to the coffee powder which we add to milk to make coffee. So, coffee powder can't be counted. That's why it comes under uncountable nouns. Now, let's quickly recap what we have learned till now. So, let's quickly recap what we have learned till now. We learned about concrete nouns, material nouns, countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Let's start. What, what are concrete nouns? As I already said, concrete nouns are names of things which can be seen or touched. For example, building, room, table. All of these things can be seen and touched and hence they come under the category of concrete nouns. Now, we will move on to material nouns. Material nouns are names of those things out of which things are made. For example, wood is used to make furniture, tables, chairs 
and cement and brick are used for making buildings, houses, etc. That's why they all come under material nouns. Next, we have countable nouns. Countable nouns are things which can be counted, like table, ice, block. All of these things can be counted and therefore come under countable nouns. Next, we have uncountable nouns. Take a note that all liquids and gases are uncountable nouns. For example, we have juice, water, gas, milk. All of these things cannot be counted and they come under countable nouns. We need to add some quantifier before these, uh, these uncountable nouns to make them countable. For example, liquids. I need a bottle of liquid. I need a glass of water. I need some gas. Like I added one glass, one liter, some. By adding these, uh, these quantifiers, which change the uncountable nouns into countable nouns. To understand countable and uncountable nouns more clearly, let's take an example. To understand uncountable nouns, let's take an example of baking a cake. For baking a cake, we need butter, all-purpose flour, cocoa powder and some milk. All of these things are uncountable nouns because we cannot count them. But we can add some quantifier to make them countable. Like we need 200 grams of butter. We need 400 grams of uh, all-purpose flour. Then we need 2 tablespoons of cocoa powder. And we need half liter of milk. By adding these quantifiers, which change the uncountable nouns into countable nouns. Next, we'll take an example of countable nouns. Sam's house was decorated with a mat, a table and a set of four chairs. All of these things, a mat, a table and a set of four chairs are countable nouns because we can count them. So, here we end our session on nouns. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something new, for, new from it. Please do comment as it motivates me to make new educational videos. Bye-bye. Till then, keep learning.